Hello and welcome, or oh, should we say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is the Global Watch International Prayer Room. It is the 8th of November 2024, and it is 3 p.m. Jerusalem time. We're excited to come together for the South Africa Watch. There are many nations represented here, so thank you so much for your support. We have Switzerland, we have Israel, we have Canada, Australia, America. Uh, I don't know if that was Germany. Okay, but welcome, welcome, and thank you for being with us. I'd like to call on Ilona. Ilona, would you please open in prayer, asking the Lord to anoint, um, guide, and to bless the watch? Father, we come into your presence this afternoon. And we are very aware of our need. And we thank you for this technology. We thank you for this opportunity where we are able to meet with uh, people across the nations. And we can stand together in prayer, Lord. You say where there are two or more of you together, there I am in your midst. And so, Father, we commit this meeting to you. We pray that each person that has an opportunity to bring a message will truly bring resurrection life into this meeting and that we will be able to receive that resurrection life into our own spirit. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are our teacher. And so we look to you this afternoon to minister to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ilona. That was, that was lovely. So for this month, the number five has been continually highlighted, not once, but double five, which is double grace. And so as I was seeking the Lord about it, he led me to 1 Corinthians 14, 26. And would you know it, there are five activities mentioned in that scripture. Let me read it to you. How is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. So based on 1 Corinthians 14, 26, each one can be prepared with something useful for all. And because this is not a theological hour, I thought the message translation would make this tangible and lighthearted. This is what it says. So here's what I want you to do. When you gather for worship, each one of you be prepared with something that will be useful for all. Sing a hymn, teach a lesson, tell a story, lead a prayer, and provide an insight. So we are going to cover each one of those. And each slot is limited to five minutes. And, and we will ensure to honor the time allotted when we are done with that. We're going to end on a prophetic word for South Africa um, from a South African which is, um, I get so excited every time I see it or hear it. And then we're going to invite you as the nations to just come into agreement and pray and speak and just share whatever the Lord is putting on your heart. So number one is Psalm, sing a hymn. And I have, let me just get it up here. I have um, an amazing song because it's sing a hymn, right? Or Psalm. Uh, it's called Still Waters, which is based on Psalm 23 by Leanna Crawford. And it's a reflective song of worship about our protection in the Lord, um, as described in Psalm 23. And we all need it. The world needs this. It is not just, it's not for South Africa. This is for all of us. So let me share that. Amen. I know that by your still waters, I am safe. What a beautiful, beautiful song. So the second part of today is a um, where it says encourage, share a word of encouragement. And what is prophecy? Prophecy is edification, exhortation, and comfort. And today we have our very own Joe Hardwick, who is going to be sharing for five minutes and bringing that encouragement. Over to you, Joe. 
Right. <clears throat> I was thinking about some really encouraging things that have happened in the last uh, four, three or four, five years uh, that I just wanted to bring first and then some scriptures. Um, for a start, um, I think it came out of the COVID uh, time, but the, the amount of prayer in this country has, uh, I don't know, it's gone to such a level that it is wonderful to see all these little prayer meetings um, around the country, which uh, if you join them all together in one place, it would be a huge amount of people praying. And um, <clears throat> so that, that is something which I think we need to give thanks for. Is, is all the, the prayer that is going up in our nation. And I found that there's also from leading from that is uh, the unity that we're finding among Christians, um, <clears throat> even working together to beautify our land, our, our local areas, which is also an encouragement because then if things are looking good, then we, we can feel good about ourselves as well as uh, the areas that we're dealing with. The other one was persistent prayer. Um, we've, see, we've seen some amazing miracles happening in the last week or so <clears throat> as, uh, as we've come together to pray against things that are not scriptural. And, um, and I think our country is going to be um, really gaining from, from what is happening uh, around uh, here as, as persistent prayer is something the Lord tells us to do. In Colossians 4, verse 2, it says, Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. And obviously, thanksgiving is really good for that. Um, and then the, the, third, the fourth thing that I suddenly thought of as we were coming on the, the call and we were looking at the music is that there are so many leaders in South Africa who are now producing their own our own homegrown worship songs. And I, I, I see that as such a, an encouragement. And every time I hear one, I'm like so proud to be, be part of this nation um, that is producing things that are going to uplift the others and ourselves uh, to a point where we are um, going to be doing good things for the Lord. So um, <clears throat> there's a few lovely worship leaders. Um, one of them who lives very close to us, uh, his name's Bertie Clutey, and some of his songs, uh, the one I always uh, love is Go, Therefore, and Make Disciples. And also, um, <clears throat> he also sang a song, which is Africa Will Be Saved. And, and that's something that we want to definitely bring into um, this land as well. So I just want to give you a few scriptures in the time that I've got left. Um, <clears throat> in Colossians 4, verse 6, uh, 5 and 6, it says, walk in wisdom towards those who are outside. So um, it, it's really important that we, we um, speak so that others will want what we have already got. And it says in verse uh, 6 of Colossians 4, let your speech <clears throat> always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. And it's in that that um, is going to really bring people into a relationship with you, um, Lord Jesus, if we are doing that. And then finally, the scriptures that I, I just love so much, which is Philippians uh, 4, um, from 4 to 6, says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. And obviously in these, this day and age, it's uh, some, one of the things we need to uh, stress the most is not to be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through mm. Christ Jesus, our Lord. Mm. So um, as I've got like one more minute <laughs> to make my five, but Lord, I just say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being part of a, a prayer movement that can really encourage other people. And we just pray that, that you will take us and our words, and not only will we build up this nation, but it will spill over into all the other nations around the world as well. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joe. That was great. Would you please put your points in the chat as well as those, the scripture from, was it, uh, the one was Philippians and the other one was Colossians. If you could put those in and any other that you mentioned. Thank you so much. Right. Now we're going to go on to number three, where it talks about tell a story. And what we've experienced on the South Africa Watch has, has been incredible testimony. And I'll never forget one from Maria now when she shared at the time where there were the flood, but I'm not going to go into any detail because I want to introduce you. Maria is well known on this call, but Maria now is bringing us number three testimony. Over to you, Maria. Hi, everybody. I'm going to read, um, I've got three small ones that's going to fit into five minutes. So we are faced with so many big issues in our country that's really worrisome and that need our prayer. But at street level, God is working amongst, amongst our people in so many different ways. So I've got these three short testimonies from my community. The first is our youngest daughter is grade seven now, which is the final year of primary school. Um, she's turning 30 next week, and most schools have a sort of a welfare for their grade sevens at the end of the year to celebrate the completion of primary school. Our school principal is a devout Christian, and a number of years ago, he, they went to Israel on tour, and um, while he was there, he attended a bar mitzvah, and he was really just struck and impacted by the father blessing, speaking a blessing over the son. Um, so when they, they returned, him and his wife decided that they are also going to start blessing, speaking blessing over their children as the Lord leads them. And they soon realized that the children really love receiving these blessings and the kids would start asking, you know, when are we going to do this blessing thing again? Um, so the principal decided to change the annual grade, grade seven farewell into a blessing evening. And every year he organizes two meetings with the grade seven parents and he shares his testimony with them. He teaches them about the importance of our words over our children and the authority that we receive from God to speak into their lives. And then on this special evening, we all gather at the local venue. He opens in prayer and a speaker break, blessing over everybody. And then each family, mum or dad or both, has a turn to stand up and speak into their grade seven's life and to bless them in front of the rest of the group. And uh, this has been going on for several years. So years. So each year, there's a new group of people that gets to experience the significance of a blessing and the spoken word. And I truly believe that each one of them will also impact others by the experience of this blessing. So from one man understanding the importance of a blessing, the Lord is impacting many lives, which is truly a multiplication. And this is a normal public school. We not in a, it's not a Christian school. Um, the second one is I've got this wonderful lady that works for me part time. She really loves the Lord. And we often to often talk about what God is speaking to us about our community. During the winter months, she and her friends set money apart from their small income to make a big pot of soup once a week for the children in the neighborhood. She only works part time and she also has her own family to feed, but somehow she always has something for a hungry person and it's just such an inspiration to me. The other day she told me that we must pray for our roads as we're heading into the holiday season. Um, you know, and there's so many accidents this time of the year. And the day afterwards, I received prayer points from the National um, Prayer Network. And one of the points was to pray over our roads. And to me, that was just such a testimony that the Lord speaks to the hearts of those whose hearts are turned to him. So that even those that don't have phones can be tuned into his heartbeat. And then the final one. During the summertime, we have an open air community prayer meeting on a, on a Sunday afternoon. And one of our regular attendees is a man from Ethiopia. He had to flee Ethiopia when he came to Christ because he's from a Muslim family. He walked all the way from Ethiopia to South Africa. It took him two years um, to reach Johannesburg. The distance from Addis Ababa to Johannesburg is about 5,500 kilometers, just to give you an idea. 
And the Lord really anointed him to minister and witness to Muslims. Quite a number of Muslims have already come to Christ through his powerful testimony. And he's always on fire for the Lord. He always looks like he's going to burst at the seams from excitement about what Jesus has done for us. He's got a little spaza shop in town. And when the kids come to buy sweets, he offers them an extra sweet if they allow him to pray over them. Um, yeah, so I believe that God is working in each town and each city across our country in similar ways. So diverse because he's the creator and has endless ways of connecting people and sharing his love in communities. And then the scripture I have is 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14 and 15. Either way, Christ's love control us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we will all die. We all died to our old, old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they, live, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. That's me. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm just getting more and more encouraged. Thank you, Lord. This is so amazing. Why didn't we do this before? <laughs> this is lovely. Absolutely lovely. Okay, number four is, um, thank you, Maria. Those testimonies are great. They really, wow, so encouraging. And for me, the those who are previously disadvantaged, so to speak, you know, there's all these different words for them. But out of their own lack to go and to give and to bless, you know, that heart, that is beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for sharing. Wow, that is that is amazing. And then number four, um, a South African who is a treasure, absolute treasure to all of us, who lives in Israel, um, is going to share on prayer, uh, leading a prayer and using prayer points. So help me to welcome the one and only Denise Harris. <laughs> Over to you, Denise. Sorry, I forget that I must unmute. Um, two disclaimers. There are um, sirens in my area, not right here, but if it does come to this area, you while I'm speaking, you'll hear it, and I will disappear because I don't have internet in my safer part of my house. So I pray that it doesn't happen. And um, the other disclaimer is I haven't been in South Africa for two decades and I haven't represented South Africa for so much time. But then I had an opportunity to, to do that and my prayers come out of that because I um, had a baptism of love like never before in this um, place of reconciliation with the Netherlands and its um, co former colonies. So the power of love, the cross, repentance, forgiveness and reconciliation, to me, that just increased. And the future is only as good as we have dealt with the past. So Lord, I ask you to help us face elements of the past that keep us from unity. What is in my past that still wants dealing with? And I, I pray, Lord, that you would give us, give me humility and let my heart to be willing to work for unity. Um, I, I heard um, previously, this afternoon of working together to beautify our areas and I no doubt there's many more places of working together that's already happening and then I want to make a proclamation together a prayer a prayer proclamation that no longer will our government have an altar where blood has been sacrificed and so Lord we plead with you that the blood be silenced, the blood of, of, of wrong covenants, and that the blood of your covenant over us that is um, connected to the cross and your life that, that you give us 
that that will become the dominant factor in our country, our beautiful South Africa. And wherever there are elements of Freemasonry, black magic, occultism, water spirits, child sacrifice, proud spirits, Lord, we want to silence those. We want to ask your repentance. I mean, we want to ask your forgiveness as we repent. And we want to ask your alertness, that you would alert our spirits if there is anything like that, that we are aware of in, in our areas where we can say no more, no longer. We do not want our government to have an altar where blood has been sacrificed. And then, um, I forgot to put the timer on. So, so I trust there's still time. For the president, I particularly feel to pray for the Holy Spirit to open the eyes of his heart, that he will have reconciliation with God the Father, Jesus the Son, and to Holy Spirit. And if there are any occultic shields around him that that uh, keep him away, that's it? No, okay. That keep him away from kingdom and godly perspectives. In your name, Yeshua, we break these off from working in his life. And we ask you to reveal any legal holds on him from the occult. Release him from his bondage. And Lord, in line also with a previous prayer that was part of a testimony, we ask that you give South Africa your Father's heart's blessing that we might find our security and refuge in you. Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you so, so much. Denise, are you able to put just the headline or just the point in the in the chat? Okay. And okay. and I, um, I know that you haven't been to South Africa for, you haven't been back for a very, very long time. Not that it's back, it's that you haven't been here. Um, but your perspective of being somebody outside, but who was here, who does have roots here, um, was is very valuable and and we are very grateful that you are able to come in today and to bring that perspective um just very quickly there's a man um who was like an adopted father to me um around the time my mom was you know getting ready to go home <laughs> to the lord um and i was sitting the one day just weeping because it's like oh my mom you know and he said to me he's from germany and he, he sat with me also because he knew my mom, he loved my mom. And he said, my people are saying to me, why don't I leave this country? My daughters are both in other countries. I wasn't born in Germany, we moved here. And then he said, my wife's ashes are here. And he said, my late wife. And then he said, my blood, my sweat is in the soil. How can I leave? That just whew, that was just so so encouraging for me at the time, and not a believer, yeah, no, well, not yet in Jesus' name. <laughs> okay, so thank you for that. Thank you, Joe. That was incredible. Thank you so so much for that, Maria. Those testimonies, brilliant, and Denise for sharing um, in prayer. So so grateful. I'm going. To, I'm I'm trying to do some summaries um, <laughs> while I'm busy doing this. But this is an exciting, um, an exciting part now, number five, which is um, insight, providing insight. And I just went before the Lord and I said, Lord, there are so there are many prophecies over South Africa. I was tempted to play that one video where it talks about the fire prophecies, where it'll start at the tip of Cape Town, and you know, there's so many. And then the Lord took me to a South African, you'll know straight away, you'll know the minute you hear his voice, you'll know. And it is it is just on five minutes. So we've tried to keep everything into five minutes. So I pray that this blesses you. There are two different prophecies that they've put together. And um, let's just hear these words, even though they were from some time back, how relevant 
the words are. So let me share that now. South Africa! South Africa! You! Once corrupted, once evil, but yet a remnant of people who love me. Have I forgotten you? Have I forgotten you, South Africa? Has the flame gone out? No! The flame is in the hearts of the people of all races and yet there is corruption from the top but I will wipe out the corrupt one and the corrupt ones who are allowing the evil and iniquity and the greed it is as bad as yesterday and a stench that has come before me says the Lord but I can change that stench into a fragrance for there are a people that have cried out to me that have remained strong from each tribe Zulu Kota, from every tribe and then the mixed races you will amalgamate into one sound and one fragrance what if you think I've forgotten you I have not forgotten the prayers of those in the early centuries, I have not turned away from those prayers. Therefore, there shall be a shaking, and I will replace, 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 and then I will fill your streets with the name of Yeshua, says the Lord. Not the name of Muhammad, not the power of Islam, but the power of Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Cape Town. Did you hear the word of the Lord? Did you hear as they sang that God would bring to the country so much peace? Yes, there will always be war. There will always be friction. But are we supposed to live in one season only? Did I not say there is a time for war and there's a time for peace? This song that was sang today was regarding South Africa. In course, it's secular Africa. Cape Town, you have been set politically to raise the standard, to raise a standard that they may see the standard. Why would I abolish a church but I shall perform and have performed surgery? Neville, Neville, Neville. This is not the end. This is a time of rejuvenation. Every seven years, the body is rejuvenated and sheds. You've been shedding and shedding and shedding. And so there is a new skin. There is a new sound. There is a new life. There is a new source, a new style, a new system that is already being set for you to set in motion in 2016. Not any earlier, Neville. Not any earlier, Wendy. 12, 2016, I have set it as my own calendar for what I want to do in Cape Town and what I want to declare and say to political leaders and to those who are in spiritual office. God says they are watchmen on the wall. Ha! What? What? Of the night, a watchman. One of the night, a watchman. Why are my watchmen in the wall in Cape Town not watching in the night? For I say, what of the night, a watchman? For God said, I've set you to watch in the night, to be watchmen on the wall, so that you would bring safety. Oh no, it's not just Cape Town. 
There are many other places that God said, so as I've rejuvenated and there's a new skin, so I shall set things in standard and people shall say, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us go and bless them. For God said, you speak about favor. This is a favor that you have prayed for. Now your time of war is coming to an end. Now your time of friction is coming to an end. Now your time of hurt and pain has come to an end. Even though they shall try and come back, I shall slap them down and say, enough, you cannot return. And therefore the Lord blesses you, Wendy and Neville, with this word. I have set Cape Town as a standard. I have set that nation as a standard to the rest of Africa to show how I can bring them back. For there is a resilience amongst the people of God that I shall prove to Africa, says the Lord. Come on. Powerful. Powerful, absolutely powerful. Thank you, Lord. And we just now at the end of, of this time, um, having been around a coffee table um, in, in this house, in the house of South Africa, where you've been visiting us in your living room, in your, in your car, some of you, <laughs> in your bed, we would like to just invite you to share and to pray or whatever is on your heart we we welcome you and we open the floor for you now go ahead elizabeth my heart is throbbing throbbing like crazy listening to this my heart my mind my spirit is all for you and i just thank the lord for allowing you surely to bring us together on this watch and my heart is with you so my, my, my verse today is Isaiah 54, 10. Though, can I read it out now? Or you want me to write it out? Though the mountains depart and the hills be shaken, my love will not depart from you, nor will my covenant of peace be shaken, says, uh, says Adonai, who has compassion on you. I'm saying this because of his covenant that he has for each one of us, he says, my kingdom is for all and it will rebuild and establish my tabernacle among mankind so that all may seek me and enter in all. No one, no one is left out because God says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So whoever believes will come in and have eternal life. My kingdom is a new covenant body, my ecclesia. It will fill my people with everlasting joy and will be a covenant of peace. I have called upon you, South Africa, into the kingdom and clothed you with my righteousness through my son. Let my righteousness of peace and joy increase in your lives and spread through all your generations. So, Father, today we thank you. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. And we thank you for this time. We join our hearts today with our brothers and sisters in South Africa. And we say, Father, may your kingdom be established. May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. May your love and compassion grow forth so that it could spread out through the nations in South Africa, Lord. May this be your banner, your Jehovah Nissi. We say Jehovah Nissi, fly through this nation so that all will come to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Thank you so, so much. Hillary. Thank you. Um, Praise the Lord. You know, I'm just getting this word and God is starting to play with it with me. And can I just pray, Shirley, because I just think the oh, best way to come out. Lord, I just thank you for this word rejuvenation. You want to rejuvenate. You want to bring back life and joy and passion and desire and yearning for you, Lord. But I get the sense also of regeneration. So that's new life and a new generation you're wanting to bring forth. A generation of true sons 
true followers of Jesus. I'm seeing the hundredfold, the ones who are going to want to walk in his covenant, who are going to yearn to be close like John, putting his head on Jesus's bosom. The ones who would just be sold out for you, Lord. I don't like that word, but there's just nothing else would satisfy. And I sense they're going to come out of a lot of painful, broken places and they're going to find Jesus and they're going to be set free from fear and witchcraft and addictions and dependencies and so much trauma. And that, Lord, you would truly rejoice as you see this garden of your sons and daughters arising and blossoming and then becoming fruitful for you, Lord. And we call forth your true end time disciples of, of this nation of South Africa. And they would not grow weary. They would not stop or turn around, but they would just know this is the hour you've called them into and to start to arise and mature and grow and be mentored and then mentor others. And I just see this as like um, a, a constant chain. One's being mentored by an older one and then they're mentoring someone else. And it's not just sitting in a pew. It's a very active living process. And Lord, we just call it forth for your re revitalization. Your, we don't ask for just revival. We're asking for reformation. And that, Father, this next generation will be established on the foundations of your truth and your covenant by your Holy Spirit. And this will be a generation who would know you as Father who will love and honor and respect you with a reverential fear of the Lord and know all your blessings of mercy and healing and every good thing you promise to those who fear you. We pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Hilary. That was powerful. Mm. I'd like to sing a little song if I do it as, uh, as best oh, I can. Right. Great. Praise is the power of heaven. Praise is the power of heaven. Praise is the power that opens the door to the king, the king of kings. The powers of darkness will flee when we praise and magnify thee. We praise and magnify thee, Lord Jesus. Amen. And I just pray for the mantles of praise and worship for our beloved South Africa in your lovely name. And we just thank you that you're raising up psalmists and praise worshippers. And may that just explode as the people themselves, when they realize the beauty of their voice in song and praise in their kitchens or wherever, just explode in South Africa. Amen. Amen. Oh, wow. Amen. Thank you so much, Mel. There's no awkward pauses. There's no awkward silence. This is our coffee table. This is, we're quite relaxed. As the Lord leads you. I'm not going to be calling on anybody. Just as the Lord just prompts you or Surely. I just want to, thank, I want to thank you for the atmosphere you've set on this call, like taking this scripture from 1 Corinthians and activating it like this with us. I just want to bless you and thank you for your, your vision to do this because it, it has called us into the house together as family, right? It is much more, I, I think Sue uses that phrase a lot that we've moved from platforming to the coffee table, but I really feel that today. And, and to have all this expression come together, I, I sense on this watch and I've sensed it before. I mean, we had a very emotional call. I don't know if it was the last one or not with, with sharing the difficulties of living, you know, with racism and, and hearing even again today about um, the iniquitous bloodshed on the altar. And I, I just feel the Lord saying in this nation that has lived with so much witchcraft and so much darkness, this resilient people is raising, rising up to say governance 
in South Africa will come through the blood of the lamb now. That th this is my will and this is what's being caught and I sense it over this call. I just want to thank everybody who shared. Maria, those stories, there's something about testimony that takes us to a place we don't go any other time. I mean, it, it's just so encouraging. So bless you, South Africa. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I just feel the, the body, the church rising up as family and rising up in that incredible resilience you hold as a people group. Bless you. And thank you again, Shirley. What a wonderful, wonderful uh, family pulling today around the word of God. Oh, thank you, Hannah. Bless you. Ah. <sighs> Thank you, Shirley. Um, I'd like to just echo um, what Hannah has said and a familiar scripture that's been coming um, in my circles and over the watch um, of the previous Davis not weeks is Psalms 126. So, you know, we know the history of South Africa and I know that there's been many within the nation and outside the nation have been praying for the destiny of South Africa to be fulfilled. And Psalms 126 seems appropriate, verse 5, those who sow in tears, those who have sown in tears in the place of intercession, the place of fasting for the nation and the destiny of South Africa, that they shall reap in joy, that they shall reap in joy. Even the forefathers um, who are long gone, who were born again, spiritual believers, praying for the destiny of South Africa, that they their prayers will be met. I don't know in the fullness of time, but it will be met because the word says those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Like um, Fred, uh, Fred Rouse says, the best days, the best days of South Africa are ahead of her, not behind her. Her best days in God are ahead of her. So I just declare this over all those beautiful people living in South Africa, that your best days are ahead of you and not behind you. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you, Corinne. We receive that. Yes, we receive that. Amen. Amen. And if you have already spoken or shared, you welcome if the Lord prompts you or if something drops in your heart. Yeah, this is Donna Craig from Oklahoma. I just want to read a portion from the book, Blessing Your Spirit. And I want to speak this over South Africa. It's only a tiny portion of the blessing. But uh, so I speak over South Africa. Your father intends for you to carry the fragrance of heaven for people to be attracted to you. It will not happen because you're effective or competent or secure or have a holy boldness about you, but because you have the perfume of heaven. I bless you, South Africa, with being a fragrant offering as you do the work God wants you to do. I bless you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. So, Father, we do speak this blessing of the fragrance of heaven over the ecclesia of South Africa. That, Father, as they go about doing what you have called them to do, that the fragrance of heaven exudes from them and people are drawn to them and by that the kingdom of god expands and the kingdom of god grows and the people come into the salvation of yeshua but also come to know him and his word in a way they never could have realized before and so we bless the ecclesia of south africa today amen Surely, I don't know whether you've heard um, of a lady called Catherine Yaxley from Tasmania in Australia. She, no, she had this um, very big picture um, perspective of these end days, and she saw in the spirit South Africa, actually, and Australia and part of Oceania connected in together. And as part of a bridesmaid, bridal type nations, standing, worshipping, um, releasing the blessing, the praise from the ends of the earth to Jerusalem, to the king and to the king of kings. And I don't fully understand it, but Lord, I just lift it up to you. I, I asked you if there's anything else. And Lord, would you bring revelation? of how that could flow 
and sadly our Australian government's not very positive towards Israel at all at the moment. But Lord, we thank you that there are believers and passionate um, bridal lovers of you, Yeshua, who understand you are our king and our bridegroom in South Africa, in Australia, throughout Oceania, Lord. And whatever way you have planned and purposed for any divine alignments, I want to call them forth for your kingdom coming and for your will to be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Hillary. I, I appreciate I that. I just want to thank um, Hillary for that. I've looked for that prophecy. I've heard of yeah. it, but yeah. I, I, I don't know where to find it, to send it. I was wanting to send it to Shirley. And I've asked for it. Someone sent it to me, but I couldn't uh, transcribe it. It was a wrong technology, but it does exist. And it does yep. speak of the role of Australia and South Africa. I will seek it. And if Hillary knows where to find it. I and got an it idea. Do you know Diane Taylor? She probably has it still. Yep. Mm. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, thank you. Thank you, Morel. Thank you, Hilary. Trinda. Yeah, thank you. I just, um, well, I was listening to that man that walked from Ethiopia and how um, blessed the feet are. And the scripture is Isaiah 52, 7. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation who say to Zion, your God reigns. Father, we thank you that you, your, he prepared. And then I saw God stepping down into South Africa and he will prepare your pathway. He will prepare your feet and you will be directed by him. There's so many scriptures about that. I can't just choose one off, off, offhand, but other than that, he will continue. We pray that he will continue to bless your feet as you go forth and bring good tidings and declare salvation. Your God reigns, South Africa. South Africa, your God reigns. Amen. 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 Thank you, Trinda. Oh, so good. So good. And for anyone who's just joined, we had an incredible time around our South African coffee table. <laughs> um, sharing on on the word and the different ways that when you come together and we open the last the final half hour to anybody who would like to just share what is on their heart there's no pressure and even if there is a moment of silence it's okay so if you have anything on your heart that you'd like to share um relating to this call there are many things happening outside there we are all well aware of what is happening. We're taking a snapshot. We're taking a moment. It's like we're going into the secret place just for a moment. Just for a moment with the Lord. I'm going to jump back in again, Shirley, because I really feel the weight on that. It's rare that we come in corporately like this. We are aware of all the, the turmoil, the chaos that's been loose, the confusion that's out there, the difficulties. And, and we go into those secret places alone. And we find that rest or we turn on a worship song like the one you shared today and we just get caught up in it. But to do it as a watch, I, I just feel him settling on this. I mean, the peace in my apartment here the the peace on this call is phenomenal it's it's very tangible I think he wants us to know that it's on his heart as a father like the out of the psalm that that the song was about earlier today that it's on his heart to say come corporately come as watches in in the midst of what's coming ahead of us take the time don't always feel you you have to respond to the war you have to quickly go to the issues that you have to you have to work you have to strive no come away come away with me and i feel that calling today and i feel i feel and sense his pleasure that we've engaged with him in this way that his peace is just flooding this watch so again well done well done leadership um 
and thank you for giving the opportunity because it it takes the invitation right leadership must make the invitation open up the family door or the family altar and say come to the table come to the table and it's it's been so rich thank you blessings again upon south africa and what they hold uh, as a leadership team and as a nation father let it rise let it rise Amen, amen, amen. Denise, do you want to expand on your comment in the chat? Are you still muted? There we go. <laughs> yes. You mean about the peace being tangible? Mm -hmm. Well, we can all feel it, but for me, it's a gift because you all know what happened last night. You wake up in the morning and kind of your personal world has changed once again. And um, honestly, the booms and the bangs around me are going on. It's not in my area directly, but it is, I can hear it. And um, such is war. So to come into this coffee table space with you, not just that, it's not just chit chat. It's been intensely peaceful. We can all sense that, and it is a real gift. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you for the wisdom to follow through on your, on your word on, about this call. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. It's been incredible. And just once again, based on 1 Corinthians 14, 26, where each one can come together. Mm. Be prepared with something that will be useful for all. Sing a hymn, teach a lesson, tell a story, lead a prayer, provide an insight. And each one came with those, with that little segment, but brought a wholeness. And we just felt that it was the South African lounge, you know, welcome to our lounge, to our, our coffee table. And so this has been such an incredible, um, and that those prophetic words from Ken Clement over South Africa was also just the cherry on top. So I'm going to ask, um, let's see, I'm going to go back to um, Maria, Maria Nell, the lady with all the testimonies. Would you please close for us and we'll hand over to Fred and Sue for the Friday brief. Thank you, Lord, so much that we can gather in your presence from all across the world. Who would have thought this can be possible? And here we are coming together in your presence from all corners of the world. Thank you for everybody that's joined us on the South Africa Watch. Thank you for lifting our spirits, Lord. I just also want to bless Shirley for her insight and for, mm. for leading us and for making this possible. Let's give you all the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name.